Hello, 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 friends. Hello, hello. Just waiting for a few more minutes to see who else joins us, and then we will get started. But welcome to you, those who have joined already. This is going to be an awesome, awesome time together. 60 minutes together, maybe 45, maybe 50, depends how many stories I tell. I'm just going to wait another 30 seconds or so. I encourage each of you, uh, while we're waiting for others to hop on, to give yourself permission, to give yourself permission to take this time for you. So mute your devices, close other browsers and other windows, and really give yourself the gift of this time. Grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, grab a nice journal that you like to use, it makes you feel good. And let's get started. So welcome, welcome, welcome to those of you who have just hopped on. This is a redefining motherhood and actually womanhood webinar where I will help you go from burnout to bliss in four steps. So my name is Louise H. Reed, and I'm so truly happy that you've decided to spend this time with me. And I'm here today doing one of my most favorite things ever, and that is to empower and equip women to leave behind the shackles of guilt, self-doubt, feelings of not enough, and the mundane and to replace that with a life of joy, confidence, fulfillment, and fun. So if you are ready to feel joy again, if you are ready to drop the feelings of guilt, to feel alive again in your life, then you are in the right place. So after one hour with me, you will know how to do this. You'll know how to rediscover you in and amongst all those hats that you wear, the hats of mother, partner, daughter, sister, taxi driver, if you're like me. You'll learn how to say goodbye to mother's guilt because isn't that crummy? You will learn how to feel enough at work and at home instead of feeling like wherever you are, you aren't enough, that wherever you are, you are falling short. After this time together, you'll learn how to put an end to the busyness and monotony of each and every day. And I will share with you the number one mindset shift to go from burnout to bliss. So after all that, are you with me? That's what I thought you said. I want you to say it. I want you to say yes. I want you to jump out of your seat and give me a great big yes. Give it to me with gusto, like you mean it. Doing something new or different is harder than staying where you are right now, even if you're unhappy. So really lean into your desire for more joy. Lean into the great big yes. So before we get started with the good stuff, let me tell you a little bit about me. A few years ago, I found the love of my life and I'm really happy to say that online dating does work. I now have the four children I always knew I'd have. Gotta love that blended family. And I left the shackles of the corporate world that never really aligned with who I was in order to pursue my dream and passions of entrepreneurship. Was this scary? Absolutely. This was the scariest time in my life. But it did take a lot of digging deep it took a lot of getting clear. It took a heck of a lot of courage and it took help from others. And I'm really proud of now where I am in my life. But it always wasn't like this. It wasn't always like this. My soul's light truly was almost extinguished before I made all the changes that needed to be made. So let me share a little story with you. Perhaps you can relate to some of this. So I'd even like you just to maybe close your eyes for a minute and just, and let me take you on this story of this little life journey that's part of my bigger, my bigger story. So this part of my story started about 15 years ago when I was newly pregnant. I decided that this was the time in my life for change. 
like becoming a first time mother wasn't enough. But anyway, I was going to listen to my gut. I was going to shift careers to do something that I was truly passionate about, something that was more aligned with my values and something that involved helping women. I always knew that was my calling. The truth is that never came to be, not at that time anyway. Little did I know I was only on the beginning of my journey. So fast forward, not long, couple of years, baby number two and baby number three came, yes, twins. And I continued on my trial and error journey of getting what I best could call is unstuck to find the freedom, the balance and the joy I was longing for. During this time, I continued juggling work, business travel, study and family, not to mention all the other stresses of life like financial struggles, divorce, major illness, industry downturns and, and changing jobs to name a few. All the while, I kept learning and growing and adding to my toolkit in hopes of finally being able to get it right and to rid myself of the knot that was in my stomach that was telling me I was missing something and that I was meant for more. Fast forward a few more years, now I'm a mom of three boys and I was working as a full-time HR manager. I was a wife to a man who later became my ex. And from the outside, I had it all. I had the picture perfect life that others envied. I had an amazing job, a husband and wonderful children. I had a supportive family, I had my health, house and financial stability. But I really decided at that time, I needed to buckle down. I got real and I got honest with myself. I got raw and I got really vulnerable. It was scary what I found, but I, I couldn't go back. I did research, I did lots of reflection, and wow, can that be hard? And along with my professional expertise and my formal education, I pieced it all together. I finally knew what I needed to do. But then the toughest part was having the courage to do something about it and to take action. And the action, well, those are the four steps that I'll share with you today. So let's take a few steps back for a second talked a little bit about me, and now I want to turn the spotlight more on you, because that's who we're here to talk about, isn't it? So this is what I see in the modern woman today. Does any of this look familiar? I see women in the grocery store looking sad, hurried, rushing to get dinner on the table for the family after a busy day at work. I see women stressed that they aren't good enough at work, even though they're doing their best. I see women at home with their families stressed that they aren't doing enough there either even though they are doing their best. I see women with little time for themselves, with few hobbies, little or no time to exercise. I see women who have lost their sense of self, who they are, what makes their soul light up. I see women living without joy in their life, women who feel completely unbalanced and living day to day on what I call the treadmill of life. I see women sitting on the sidelines of their own life, not on the main stage. I see women in and settling for unhappy and unfulfilling relationships. And I don't like to admit, I don't like to admit to myself that these described a lot of what I was like a number of years ago. So I'd like you to get that pen and that piece of paper out. And I'd like you just to keep a tally of how many of the following statements apply to you. Don't worry, you're not sharing this with anyone. This is truly only for your own benefit and reflection. Are you constantly running? Are you going through the motions each and every day? Always busy or stressed? Don't feel like you're giving enough in your relationships? Pull in so many directions, rarely get enough sleep, make poor food choices, don't exercise much or at all. Feel that there's not enough time. Are you afraid to let anyone down? Will you do everything possible to avoid saying no? How about squeezing every last drop out of your day, even if it means answering emails in the early hours of the morning? Feeling unfulfilled in your work? Feel stuck and don't know what to do next? Do you put your dreams and goals and the life that you desired on hold? Do you live a life full of shoulds? Do you should all over yourself? Those are hard. Those are really hard things to sit with and reflect on because these are things that we have allowed to come into our lives. So is this you too? 
getting ready for work in the morning, putting on a brave face each day. So what masks do you wear? And how does it feel having to pretend that you're fine when you're anything but? How does it feel to resist help when it's exactly what you need? How does it feel to present false fronts and false upbeat emotions? How long do you want to continue to live like this? Wait till your kids are grown up or your marriage or relationship breaks down? Now, I'm not trying to make you feel bad about yourself. I'm saying it to help you stop settling and to strive for more. But I already know that that's you because that's why you're here. But I do want to ask you, in the words of Dr. Phil, I'm a huge fan, how is that working for you? How is those decisions to stay stuck in those patterns and those ways, how's it working for you? Let's turn this thing around. And that's what we're here to talk about. And I'm gonna share openly and honestly and fully and willingly. I do not want people to have to take 10 to 15 years to figure this out like I did. But that being said, while I will give all of the information and the tips and strategies and hacks to you, I need to say that this is not a quick fix. So this is not for women who are comfortable in most aspects of their lives. It's not for women who are unwilling to invest in their learning and advancement. It's not for women who lack commitment to taking action, nor is it for those who are indecisive or who are not ready to be honest with themselves. So who is this for? Who did I design this for? It's for you if you're feeling burned out. It's for you if you don't know who you are anymore. You've lost that sense of self. You've lost your self-identity. It's for you if you're ready to prioritize yourself again. It's you if you want to be happy but don't know where to start. If you're looking for balance in your life and seeking more fulfilling work. You want more from your relationships with your kids, with your partner, with your parents, with your friends. And you just want some fun. I mean, when did life stop getting fun anyway? Insert more fun and joy. And it's, you, it's for you if you're really ready to do the work to figure it out. So my promise to you over the next period of time together is to give you the sh four shifts that will take you from surviving to thriving from fearful to fearless, and from chaos to balance. This, folks, really is my life's calling and what lights me up inside is to share this with others. I do wanna emphasize that there is nothing for sale today. If you stay with me until the end, you get it all for free. And once you've made the shifts, you will have complete clarity on who you are and what you want. These shifts will help you kiss guilt, stress, and fear goodbye. They'll help you restore balance and a sense of control in your life. You'll enjoy your kids and you'll have more of a boom in your relationship. You'll be excited about your future and you'll know how to go and get it. And you'll feel confident again in who you are, in how you show up each day, in your relationships, in your work, and the decisions that you make. And finally, after you've learned these shifts, you'll know how to go out and get what you want. So the real problem, obviously, here is that you haven't made the important shifts yet. And what I can tell you is that happy, successful, balanced, high achievers, which I know you are a high achiever, otherwise you wouldn't be here wanting more. They did all these four things. And I, too, have made these shifts in my life and went from merely surviving to thriving, fulfilled, and having fun. So this means that the four shifts can work for you too. I wanna emphasize that I truly, truly do understand where you are. I've been in your shoes and that's why I'm here talking to you today. It truly breaks my heart to see amazing, smart, capable women who are unhappy and struggling to get through each day when there is another way. I struggle just like you and after many years and lots of money on books and courses, I figured it out. I put my professional expertise and life experience in a blender. And finally, I have it and I don't want to keep it a secret. But I do need to admit, I do have an unfair advantage. I worked in human resources for more than 15 years, many of that in coaching, 
and training and development and, and leading others. This involved a lot of work, helping others in self-awareness and discovery. I became certified in a variety of tools to help me better understand myself and then had to teach that up to others. And it still took me all this time. On top of knowing all that, I had to get to a point where I hit rock bottom. And that for me was being in a marriage that I was deeply unhappy in, albeit with three wonderful children. I stayed so long because I couldn't face the idea of not waking up with them each and every day. But it got to a point where one of my very best friends told me that the light inside me was almost out. I was crushed. If I was not able to hide it from her, I knew that I had to do something different. I'd already tried changing jobs, thinking that that would fix the issue, but clearly changing a job when the issue is at home doesn't fix anything. So before we delve into the shifts a little, a little more detail, let's talk a little more and let me share with you a little more about, about me from HR leader to empowerment coach for women. I've already told you that, you know, I, it took me unfortunately about 14 years of using a DIY approach. In the end, what I did was combine my background in coaching in health and well-being. And I developed a program that worked to finally achieve a, a life of balance, clarity, and joy for me. I had to experience ill health. I had to experience a child, one with children, not a child, children, one of them with significant learning disabilities, and then a divorce to finally piece this transformation together. And I now have a desire and a sense of responsibility to share these learnings with others. My mission, to share this with women so they don't have to take, so you don't have to take more than 10 years like I did. Hard, scary, and lonely years, piecing the puzzle together. All right, so you're saying enough already. Let's do this, yes? Let's discover the four shifts. Okay, here we go. Shift one, pause and look inwards. So why do we do this? Well, I don't need, this comes as no news to anyone that we live in a super high, high fast paced environment. Technology is all around. We've got multiple email accounts. We've got multiple devices dinging and ringing in our faces and our ears and buzzing in our hands. And all of that serves to create a lot of noise in our minds, in our hearts, and in our souls. So pausing and breathing and looking inwards gives us clarity. Let me ask you a few questions. Have you ever changed jobs only to still be unhappy? It's an expression, the grass is always greener. Sometimes it's actually not the job at all. Have you ever started volunteering, say, at the school or somewhere in your community because you felt like you needed to make more connections and feel more connected, but really, instead of fueling you, it burdened you? Perhaps your soul needed nurturing through a greater connection with friends. Or have you ever joined a gym, even though you don't know when you'll fit it in, or if you lack commitment to seeing it through to make it happen, and you just did it because you thought that you should? I think we've all been guilty of these to a certain extent, all come from really good intentions. But what's lacking here is clarity. So I'm a huge Oprah fan, I'm a huge fan of quotes, and so I wanted to share this one with you because I thought it was relevant. If you peel back the layers of your life, the frenzy, the noise, stillness is waiting. That stillness is you. So when you quiet the noise, and you still the mind, and you look inwards, that's where the answers are. I heard something about a year ago that said happiness is an inside job. We all look outside for the, for the shiny objects, the nice house, the nice shoes, and I am a fan of shoes. I have a shoe problem and I am okay with that. It's not to say that we can't like nice things and have things that look good, but if we are looking outside to fix our sad inside, we will never fix anything. So this step one, or this shift, the first shift is about getting clear and peeling back the layers about what makes you happy, what makes you feel most alive, and what do you want to get from this life? 
There's so much to reflect on and uncover. It's taken years to get to this point in your life. So it takes a bit of time to get a full sense of what's going on and what's under all of the layers. The result of this is your inner GPS that will be your guide. This is an, an inner GPS or a guide that allows you to make decisions that are in alignment with who you are, your values, what matters most to you, and what you want out of life. As I mentioned, there are many things to reflect on here, which I don't have the opportunity to go through all of them with you, but this is one on this slide here. This is one simple and powerful exercise I use with my clients, and I want to share it with you. So let's walk through it now. It's called the Life Balance Wheel, Life Balance Worksheet, whatever you want to call it. It's essentially a helicopter view of your life so that you can bring things back into balance. And the only way that you can bring things back into balance is kind of to take, not kind of, is to take stock of where you're putting your time and energy now compared to where you would like to be putting your time and energy. So you'll see there are eight sections of, of the wheel. And on, on the right, um, sorry, on the, on the right of the slide, and each one represents an aspect of your life. So if you look at the center of the wheel and see that as a number one and the outer edge as a number 10, I want you to rank your level of satisfaction with each area of your life. It's not about what you want it to be or what it has been in the past. It's your current level of satisfaction. You then connect the dots and the new perimeter represents the wheel of your life. So if, if this were a real wheel, how bumpy would the ride be? What areas would need more attention? This exercise will take you only 15 minutes maximum and provide huge amounts of clarity on where you spend your time and why you might not be feeling very balanced. You stay to the end of this webinar. I will be more than happy to share with you how to get a copy of this Life Balance Worksheet for free. So to close on this shift, shift one of looking inwards and being still, um, we're going to, I'm, I'm going to share a quote with you, a couple quotes, and share with you an example. I'm going to share with you one of the clients that I've worked with, what she has said and the transformation that she has got. So self-reflection is a humbling process. Any of you who have engaged in those kinds of surveys, whether it's in a a magazine, I think it's Cosmo did a whole bunch. I know growing up, I used to do the Cosmo surveys. I'm poking fun a little bit at that. Often in the workplace, there are lots of surveys that you can like, engage in and get information on how you're showing up at, at work as it relates to your leadership style or your thinking preferences. Many know Myers-Briggs, it's all sorts. And these, the purpose of these is to give you insight into to who you are, into the areas of your life perhaps uh, and areas of your being that you might not have full insight into. So it's essential to find out why you think, say, and do certain things, and then you can take action to better yourself. I talked to you about how this, this shift gives you your inner clarity, gives you that inner GPS, and what that allows you to do when you have that insight and that groundedness in, your, in yourself and in your soul allows you to, when decisions come to you or you're at a decision point, you can ask, will this thing bring me closer to or take me further from my goals? And when you do that in alignment with your inner GPS, you'll always be led in the right direction. So that is the power and the value. This is actually how I got my radio show. I uh, have my own live radio show and podcast. It's the Louise H. Reed Show. It's on iTunes. It's on Spotify. It's on iHeartRadio. And this was totally by accident. And it came to me in a moment. And had I hesitated in that moment I, and said no, that opportunity would have been gone. So what happened was I have, was a guest on somebody's radio show. And at the end of the radio show, we were off air and the producer came to me and said, you know, complimented me on, on how I did on the radio show. And I guess because of my message and what it is that I do and how I want to be conveying my message and impacting others in the world, he asked, would you like to have your own radio show with our network? I took a deep breath and I thought to myself, this exact thing by Zig Ziglar, will what am I about to do bring me closer to or take me further from my goals? And I knew that answer 
was closer to. And that made me say yes. So that's the power of having the clarity. So let me give you another example. Beautiful Kaylee here. So Kaylee got clear and got results. So Kaylee is a successful corporate mom who after spending years in an unfulfilling career decided to finally face fear head on and live life on purpose. To follow the tattoo that she has on her arm and you can see a little bit of that tattoo in the picture. It says, love your life. She knew she was meant for more. Kaylee worked with me to get clear on who she was, what she valued and what her fears were and what was holding her back. And then we moved forward. She's now excelling in a fast paced career, working from home and her possibilities feel endless. So that's the first shift, the first most important shift to happen it has to be that clarity. So let's move on to shift number two. This is about mindset. Who here has heard of mindset before? Quite simply, you change your thinking, change your life. New mindset, new results. Lots of different ways to say this. So what we're going to do now is just going to explore mindset a little bit more. And then once again, I'll give you an exercise to go through a little bit of growth work instead of homework. I call it growth work. And let's see if we can get some of these sh shifts happening in your life. So the number one mindset shift to go from burnout to bliss, which I promised I would share with you. The number one mindset shift that I see in a modern woman that needs to happen is this self care does not equal selfish. Let me ask if this sounds familiar. So yes, that is a picture of me with my three boys a number of years ago now. So with three children under the age of three, clearly this picture was taken a few years after that, but I, a husband, a great house, a loving family and a part-time job in my field, I had the life I'd always wanted, the life I'd actually planned and created for myself. Yet I found myself feeling increasingly frustrated and resentful and couldn't figure out why. Who does that resonate with? So let's talk a little bit about why. Well, the survey says, first of all, you're not alone. So hopefully that gives you some level of comfort. Research and common sense, though, tells us, tells us it's due to a few things. It's due to overparenting. We've heard that term helicopter parent, due to overscheduling is due to gatekeeping. Is it really any wonder that we feel like the woman on that infographic on the right? I mean, truly, what do we expect? We treat our cars better than we treat ourselves. Our cars usually can get regular maintenance, get oil changes. If things start to squeak or we see signs that things may be wrong, a light shows up on the dash, we take it to the garage. And yet our bodies, our minds, and our souls have been giving us signs for years. And instead we choose to put a Band-Aid over it. That would be equivalent to putting like a piece of tape over the light on the dash that has just shown up for our car. So is it really any wonder that we feel like this? Self-care really means giving the world the best of you instead of what is left of you. I'm going to say this one again, and I really want it to sink in with you. I really want you to listen to these words. Listen with your heart. Don't listen with your head. Self-care means giving the world the best of you instead of what is left of you. I mean, it totally makes sense, doesn't it? So this is the growth work here. I want you actually to look at your schedule and re-examine it. Is it brimming with kids' activities and none for you? And then I want you to ask yourself, when do you have the opportunity to recharge, to do the things you enjoyed before kids were born, to have the chance to be just you? And then I want you to take 10 minutes and write a to-do list for you. I'm not talking about going to the gym necessarily. That's actually not something I think is, some, is, is a, is a to-do list item that is a nice to have. I think health is a, is a must have. That said, if that is not something that you've had as a priority item on your list for years, that's maybe where you have to start. Up to you. But for those of you who are already regularly working out, that doesn't count for you. <laughs> so I want you to create that to-do list. Again, it doesn't involve calling the doctor to get your pap booked, which is actually on my 
my to-do list, but this isn't the kind of to-do list. This is a soul to-do list, things that fill your soul and make you feel good. One of the things that I love to do, this is a really, really simple one and an easy one. On days where I may have a few extra moments, I love to go into chapters and look at the nice journals and pens and the decorative, uh, the house area, the home decor area. That is something really little and simple that really lights me up. I get a nice coffee and I take my time. I have lots of other things as well I enjoy, um, like going to the spa, certainly getting my nails done with my friends, lots of things on that list. I want you to sit down and create that list for you. And as a side note, that inner voice, that inner voice that makes us feel guilty, that tells us that we're not worthy, that tells us it's Saturday morning and you have to do all the chores around the house before you can enjoy reading a chapter of your book. That inner voice is our self-sabotaging voice. And I'm encouraging you while you're sitting down creating this to-do list for you, Hear what that voice is saying to you. I call mine Sally, and I tell you that Sally, she is on a timeout a lot of the time. If Sally is telling me that I'm a bad mom or starts to guilt trip me, I put her on a timeout. Learn to hear that inner voice. You do have the power to choose differently. Once again, another, another quote or a statement which I found quite gr grounding and, and, and moving. She knew the power of her mind, and she, so she programmed it for success. Let that be you. Let that be you. Who's ready for shift number three? Get moving and set goals. So a few things from, as a side note from, from Louise's desk I want to say about goals. So setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. Pretty obvious. Discipline, however, is the bridge between setting those goals and accomplishing those goals. Set your goals high and don't stop till you get there. And then successful people maintain a positive focus in life no matter what is going on around them. So those are some focus statements that keep me grounded and focused as I'm setting goals and working to achieve goals that I really just wanted to share with you. Now this slide is pretty impactful. I want you to take a second and take a look at it. We see an icon of an individual um, which represents people with no goals. The middle individual, the blue one, is people with goals in their heads. And then the gold individual represents people with written goals. 83% of the population have no goals. 14% of the population have goals in their heads and only 3% of the population have written goals, which is staggering as far as I'm concerned because then when you look at the very top of the page, how many more times successful is someone with written goals than no goals? 30 times more successful. Come on folks, let's do this, let's do this. So let's go a little layer deeper, goals step by step. You're a successful, high achieving corporate mom, you've heard about goals before. Bear with me here, I'm attacking goals from a slightly different perspective. I'm not gonna to talk to you about SMART goals. Yes, they do have to be specific and measurable. I'm gonna talk about it in a slightly different way. So now that you're clear on where you spend your time, we've done that in, in the clarity, clarity step and what you're happy with and what you wanna change in your dreams. And we've got that rock solid mindset. You've put Sally in the corner while you go and chase your dreams and you're gonna write goals down. I want you to come up with one goal, just one, start with one, personal or professional, and one that excites you. So one that when you wake up in the morning, you're excited to embark on. We all know, going back to the working out the gym example, we all know that being healthy is the way to be. I'm asking you right now, if that is not something you want to do for you, don't bother. Don't bother setting that as a goal, which you then will just continue not to meet, which you will continue then to feel crappier about yourself. It's kind of like smoking. My brother has smoked for years. It breaks my heart that he smoked because my grandma died in her early 40s of lung cancer. But it doesn't matter who is telling my brother to quit smoking. 
doesn't matter about the information he has getting presented to him. He knows it's not healthy. He doesn't want to stop smoking. So my point here is if you don't want to exercise and get healthy, don't do it. Don't torture yourself. Instead, choose something that makes you light up inside. And then let's get specific. If you're having difficulty in coming up with one of these goals, that's okay. We often don't look at our lives like this. And so be kind to yourself through this process. The people I work with, I have to remind themself, I have to remind them all the time, be kind. Talk to yourself like you would talk to a friend. We are often so cruel to ourselves. That inner dialogue is mean. And that keeps us small, it keeps us down, and it doesn't have us nailing our goals. So if you're having difficulty coming up with one goal and one that really excites you, go back to the getting clear exercise. Look at that life wheel. Start reflecting on other things that are important to you. Start looking at your values. Start looking at what success means to you. Write it down and look at it in a fulsome way. It's not just about money and going on trips. It's also, success can also be about, as it was for me, being able to work from home. I wanted a home-based business for two reasons. One, I wanted more freedom to travel. And two, the weeks that I have my boys, as I am divorced, the weeks that my boys are with me and not with their dad, I wanna be home when they leave the school and I wanna be home when they get home. I'm still working, but those were really, really critical success factors to me. So go back to those exercising on, exercises and looking inward. There is a gem of a goal waiting to be found there. So you've got your goal. I want you to write it down in the positive and the present. And why? Because your subconscious mind is a very efficient tool. If you don't know what the subconscious mind is, think about it for a second. You go to bed one evening and you are wrestling with a solution to a problem at work, whatever the problem may be. You wake up in the morning and boom, there it is. You've not consciously been trying to solve that problem. That was the day before. Your subconscious mind is efficiently working as you're sleeping to help piece together and solve the problem. And the thing about the subconscious mind, what we know and all research points to is the more positive instructions you give it, the more positive results you will get. So that's why I want you to write down the, po it down the positive and the present. Goals can be very daunting, can't they? They can be exciting, but they can be daunting. So break your goals down into small actionable steps and assign realistic timeframes to each and continue to break the big steps into smaller and smaller steps until they seem less daunting and totally achievable. Keep breaking them down until you think to yourself, I could do that. And then celebrate. And I want you to plan the celebration before you even embark. When you're thinking about this goal, I want you to imagine yourself having achieved it. So let's say, keep using the weight example, it's an easy one to go to because we can all relate and we can all see it. So let's say you had a goal of losing 40 pounds in one year. I want you to imagine yourself, the 40 pounds was a mountain. That's the mountain that you overcame. That was the goal that you achieved. You got to the top of the mountain because you've lost the 40 pounds, so you're at the top. And you're at the top looking down, so I have lost 40 pounds. This is how your goal would sound. I have lost 40 pounds in one year. And you put the date as to when the one year time frame is. I want you to think about who you're with up there. Who is up there celebrating with you? Is it your partner? Is it your mom, your dad, friends? Is it colleagues? Is it your running buddies? Is it your friends at the gym? Who is up there? What are they saying? How do you feel? How do you celebrate? Do you buy a pair of jeans that just make you feel like a, a rock star? Celebrate, choose the celebration and work towards it. Know how you will reward yourself for hitting your benchmarks along the way. And when you have achieved that goal, you celebrate, own it. This goes back now to the first thing I was saying about goals and it's my best piece of advice for success is you must care about and be passionate about your goal. All right, we've talked about getting clear, getting quiet and getting clear for clarity. So you've got your inner GPS. We've talked about the impact of mindset um, and the number one mindset shift is that self-care does not equal selfish. And then we just talked about setting goals. The next piece, which is critical to success, certainly critical to my success and 
anyone that I know who has achieved great success in their life is embracing help. We know this, that every great achiever is inspired by a great mentor. Let's talk about a few of these amazing people. Who doesn't know Oprah Winfrey? She's attributed some of her success to her life coach. She's been a major advocate for life, life coaching as a result. Over the last 25 years, she's presented a multitude of life coaches to her fans and highly suggests her viewers to use a life coach to succeed. Danny Bonaducci, anyone recognize this guy? He is formerly of the Partridge family. He was a child star and he did have a rough go at life in previous years, which involved drug use, homelessness, and run-ins with the law. With the use of a life coach, he was able to center himself again. So it gets that clarity and focus and get his life back on track. He now is a life coach himself and helps others ta tackle difficult issues in their lives. Serena Williams. I'm a huge Serena fan. Uh, we know that during Serena's career, she's battled ongoing injuries to stay on the court. As you can imagine, the constant grill of playing through injuries can take a toll when you're a high performing athlete. She's worked with, you guessed it, none other than Tony Robbins to persist and train through her injuries. It paid off in the end because she is one high flying woman. She's recently had a baby and she has come back after a difficult, a difficult uh, pregnancy and uh, had an embolism. And it's not just her coach, her tennis coach that keeps her on track. It's the mindset. This is the mindset and the dedication and the goal setting and the drive. There's so much more to success than setting goals. I believe, and I've done a lot of reading about this and continue to do a lot of reading about it, that mindset is half, if not more. Leonardo DiCaprio, another example of someone who has worked with the head honcho of life coaching, Tony Robbins. He's a little quieter about his involvement with a life coach, but he uh, doesn't shy away from sharing it when asked. And then there's me. I absolutely would not be where I am today had I not, first of all, made the decision to do something different in my life, and then I found someone who could get me there. That's exactly the path that I took. So the game changer for me, as I just shared, and the game changer for all these people that I just talked to you about, and for so many high achievers, they did not invest in mentors when they were already making their millions and earning their Olympic gold. They invested like I did when I made the decision to have a better life for myself, to have the career I wanted, to have a life of, fulf of fulfillment, of fun, of purpose. That's when I hired my coach to get me there. So these people, they were investing when they were living in their parents' garage and training at the local community gym. That's what high achievers do. And why? For a variety of reasons, here are some of them. Certainly for information, knowledge, expertise, and advice. An educated and valued outside perspective. We often cannot see where we need to improve and where others, others can. High achievers work with mentors to stimulate personal and professional growth for accountability while encouraging us also to keep going, to get us to places in our lives we can't get to on our own and absolutely to expedite the process from point A to point B. Ultimately failure to get the support that you need can lead you to never figuring out what shifts you need to make or you're left struggling so much that you eventually stop and accept life as it is. Don't let that be you. So what do you need to win? What do you need to be successful? The four shifts, discover that inner GPS. And once you get clear, stay connected to your why. The how will easily follow. Shift two, change your mindset. Our minds are such powerful things. If you say you can, you're right. If you say you can't, you're right. So watch what you tell yourself each and every day and how you explore your life's possibilities. It's all in your control. Focus on you again, it's not selfish, it's smart. And then get going. This is about setting the, setting the goals that we talked about, the exciting goals, the juicy goals, the ones that excite you and make you feel larger than life. Be deliberate in how you spend your time and who you spend it with. Don't live an accidental life. Be purposeful and passionate in the goals that you set for yourself. 
And then lastly, invest in mentoring. These shifts alone will propel your life forward in a way that will bring more balance, more fulfillment, and absolutely more joy. So let's put it all together. So now is your chance to break through. I've set aside some time to talk with you about how you can apply these concepts to your life and the cost is free. I gave you these four shifts, but the reality is most of us, not all of us, most of us need help in applying these shifts to our own lives. So I invite you to book a free call now. You can schedule an appointment on my website, louisehreed.com, and note that spaces are limited. So let's say you take the call, because I know you will. I know you will. You're one of those high achievers who want to see a difference in their life. This is what it will look like. You will receive an absolutely complimentary 50-minute coaching call with me. We will discover, we will talk about and discover in that time together um, where you're stuck, what's getting in your way, and what you need to do. We will talk about how you can work with me, but that's absolutely not a requirement. There really are no tricks or gimmicks. It's simply that simple. So how do you know if this is you? How do you know if you're ready? If you're ready to up-level your life in any way, relationships or your job, if you're ready to have a love and passion for life again, if you're ready for joy and balance and you wanna hop off the treadmill of life, you wanna be in the driver's seat of your own life, this is, ready, this is for you if you're ready to find clarity about really what makes you happy. Identify who you have become through all of these years that have passed. If you're ready for quality time with your kids and others who matter most to you. It's for you if you want an amazing job that you love most days. If you want freedom and the means to have fun and, and, and to travel. If you want a healthy body and mind. If you need to set personal boundaries and stop saying things, stop saying yes to the things you want to say no to. And if you're ready for action, you are ready for change and you want to see it now and you want to see it fast. And it's for you also if you want support and accountability to help you get to where you want. This is not, the discovery call is not for those who are not ready to be true and honest with themselves. It's not for you if you're simply curious but not interested in making changes or applying these shifts. It's not for you if you believe that you need to do this all on your own or if you believe you can do this all on your own. And it's not for you if you're not willing to dedicate the time to learn and apply the shifts. So what happens to those who choose to work with me? I will walk you through step by step and hold you to the same standards as previous successful clients. The curriculum is designed to get you to create a life in which who you are, what you believe and what you want are all aligned. It will be fun, full of surprises and all the things you want in life will start showing up. I will guide you through every step of the transformation. You won't be alone. Those who wish to work with me, get ready. So now we're coming to a close of the webinar. You've really got three choices at this point. You can procrastinate and do nothing, continue to live and feel as you do. You can keep going at it alone, continue to flounder and spend years trying to figure it out. Or you can book your free no commitment discovery call at louisehreed.com. This is what I'm encouraging you at this point of the webinar to do, to do something today that your future self will thank you for. The very beginning of our time together, I told you that if you stayed till the end, that I would be more than happy to share the life balance wheel with you. If you want that life balance wheel or worksheet, please drop me an email and I'll send it your way. You can reach me at louise at louisehreed.com. At this time, I want to encourage you once again to be brave, be bold, be happy, choose you. Thank you so much for all of your time. You're an amazing woman and I appreciate everything that you've given today and good luck to you. And I look forward to the discovery call we have together. Bye friends.